Each airport has characteristics that can lead pilots to make errors that result in wrong surface operations, runway incursions, or other surface events. Let's take a look at issues you might encounter at Frederick Douglass Greater Rochester International Airport from the flight deck. Frederick Douglass Greater Rochester International, or ROC, is a medium-sized multi-use airport located on the southwest side of Rochester, New York. Rochester has associated Class Charlie airspace, and pilots visiting the airport for the first time should review the requirements to operate in this type of airspace. The configuration consists of three runways, two that intersect labeled 422 and 1028, and a smaller third runway labeled 725. A complex taxiway system provides access to all services and ramps located north and south of the runway complex. The typical traffic found at the airport consists of a wide range of civil and military aircraft. Single-engine trainers utilized by the flight schools, large transport category airliners, and military helicopters flown by the New York Army National Guard are all frequent at Rochester. In addition, it is not uncommon to see transient heavy transport and tanker aircraft. The mix of pilot experience and aircraft capability make the airport an interesting and challenging place to fly or work. An arrival alert notice is available for Rochester and provides a graphic depicting the approach to the airport. View the arrival alert notice on the FAA's runway safety page at faa.gov AAN or the special notices section towards the back of the appropriate chart supplement. Since the approach ends of the runways are so close together, pilots have misidentified their landing runway and attempted to land on the incorrect one. One mitigation strategy might be to load an instrument approach or create a GPS user waypoint aligned with the correct and assigned runway. If you are unsure of how to accomplish this, please refer to the user's manual for your navigator. Another issue that occurs occasionally in this same general area, and primarily at night, concerns a well-lit multi-lane avenue that aligns almost perfectly with the final approach course for runway 28. The avenue ends approximately two miles east of the approach end, but has still been misidentified as the runway numerous times. There are a few other areas that visiting pilots need to be aware of. Number one. The first is found at the intersection of Taxiway Echo and Runway 725. The common issue at this location is that aircraft taxiing on Taxiway Echo southeastbound may inadvertently cross the hold short lines and incur the runway. Recently installed runway guard lights, also called wigwag lights, have helped mitigate this issue. Still though, pilots should exercise extra vigilance when operating in this area. Aircraft taxiing from the ramp area via Taxiway Golf have missed the hold short lines for runway 725. Complete understanding of your taxi clearance, including route, turns, and hold short instructions before you move the airplane, and extra vigilance outside the moving aircraft for markings, above ground signage, and lighting will go a long way in avoiding this type of error. In the same general area, there is a service road that is south of and parallel to the entire length of Taxiway Foxtrot. This road has been mistaken many times for the taxiway. Again, close attention to signage and markings while the airplane is moving will help avoid operating on the wrong surface. As always, you must have an air traffic control clearance to land or take off from a towered airport. While not common, there have been instances in which pilots have landed or departed the field without a clearance from air traffic control. Please remember, if you are ever in doubt or unsure of any air traffic control instruction or clearance, the easiest answer is to ask the tower. They are there to help. Be aware of a small area on the surface at Rochester where some aircraft lose the ability to receive radio reception from the tower depending on the type of aircraft and its antenna location. This is due to where the radio antennas are located and an obstruction being directly in the path between the antennas and this dead zone. We hope this short video will help pilots make better decisions and along with the air traffic control tower, make your flight safe and enjoyable. Now you're better prepared for your trip to Frederick Douglass, Greater Rochester International Airport. It's always better to know before you go.